Right, we just had the quick vote and uh, it's still pretty cold here. So what we're going to do, and there's quite a big swell, so it's not going to be very good to play in because the water is so cold. So we can be in Crystal Beach within one hour from now. Right now it's 24 degrees down there. So that is where we're heading. We're going to quickly load up. So we'll be on the water in Lake Erie in one hour. Yeah, I got, I got the weather wrong. Hold on, hold on. I got the, the... the guy that has the channel is chasing storms. Can't figure out a north wind versus a south. We're just going over the Welland Canal. And we left Jordan 10 minutes ago. It was 7 degrees. Look at it now. 14. Ah, look who's in front of me now. Mr. Forrest. Within a matter of a few minutes, look at that. Seven degrees to 24 degrees. Made a good call coming down to the uh, Crystal Beach. All right, part two. I'm now down at Crystal Beach. And what a difference. We went from seven degrees at Jordan Harbor to 23, 24 degrees here. And the water is like glass. Unbelievable. So we're just getting the skis in the water. Mind all the bugs, and then we're going to head over to Port Coburn and uh, we'll check out the lighthouse on the way back. And I uh, might even get the drone up over the lighthouse as well today. But look at the water here, look at that. That is like so nice. And the adventure continues. Part two. Look at that. Like 10, 12 feet of water, crystal clear. Glass. Right, uh, the plan is for right now, we're gonna start making our way to Port Coburn, which is uh, west of here. found my little spot, buggers. So it looks like we're going to the lighthouse first. Alright. See, I already have it on my map where I go. It is just stunningly clear today. Uh, April 24th, by the way, is the day today. And, um, okay, it's a little cold when you're riding, but now that we stopped, it's probably about 18, 19 degrees out here. Uh, by the beach, it was a lot warmer, of course. Uh, but look, this is just absolutely fantastic. So this is Point Abino Lighthouse. We've done many videos on this before. This is where I shoot uh, the couple of review videos I've done of the GTXs, uh, the 170 and the 300 Limited. Uh, most of it was shot around here because it's just perfect conditions. Now the water here will be quite warm already. It warms up really quick because it's so shallow. And uh, you'll probably get out there and have a walk around. Look at the fish. Don't know if you can see them. So there'll be a lot of fish spawning around here because it's warmer water. It's not even a current or anything, it's beautiful. No, 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 okay, okay, okay. I'm the tour guide. So this, this lighthouse was built in 1917. <laughs> it was based on the Greek design, whatever that means. Cause it's like a Greek design, I guess. The red bit sticking out on the front is the fog horn, which no longer works. Uh, the light at the top is just an LED light now, which is just for show. Okay. Town of Fort Erie owned this but that's all private land. So you can't walk to the lighthouse. Oh. Yeah, the only way you can get to it is by boat, kayak, or a guided tour, which you do like every now and then. Yeah.
Point Abenel had been identified as early as 1855 as a desirable location for a lighthouse. The Federal Department of Marine and Fisheries commissioned William P. Anderson to design a lighthouse, which it built starting in 1917. The Point Abano Light Tower was a response to increased traffic at the east end of Lake Erie. In the 15th of September 1917 edition of Canada Gazette, a notice was included that the lighthouse was under construction and would open when completed in early October. The wealthy summer house owners, which you can see located right behind the lighthouse, formed the Point Abano Association which negotiated with the Department of Marine and Fisheries to sign an agreement restricting access to the lighthouse from the water. As a result, the lighthouse was built on a rocky shelf at the end of the point. The lighthouse keepers could only access the lighthouse by wading through the shallows. Even during construction, access to the private roads on the peninsula was restricted, requiring construction materials to be brought onto the site by the western shore. The White Square Tower was built in the Greek Revival style from poor concrete. In 1988, the lighthouse became the very last one in Ontario to become automated and sadly in 1995 the lighthouse was decommissioned. And finally, the property and buildings were purchased by the town of Fort Erie from Public Works Canada in April of 2003. It consists of a deck, the tower and fog alarm building. It was officially recognized as a National Historic Site of Canada on the 15th of July 1998 and was listed on the Canadian Register of Historic Places on the 22nd of April 2009. fish just there. The ripples stop, you'll see him quite clearly because he's actually coming towards me, he's just turned around. There he is. Nice sized fish. He's uh, inquisitive, he's uh, he's coming towards us. Hello fish. Fantastic! We're going to the Shirkston shipwreck. Show the people uh, the shipwreck that's out here. With it being so calm, we'll be able to uh, ride right over and get a really nice view of down below. day out this is phenomenal really really buzzing right now the weather is fantastic 24th of april and we're having so much fun out here on lake erie it is fantastic join us as we take a ride for this old shipwreck here at shirkston shores it is crystal clear right now so i'm going to take you right through it but mark's in the way of course, he's got to get his video in first. What a surreal shot that is. That is fantastic. The floor of the ship is still look. Look at that. How clear it is today. It's unbelievable. Watch out for those sharp bits down there. I did a video on this ship uh, a while ago, so what I'll do, I'll put a link in the description. And if you're watching on your computer, there should be a link up here somewhere. Oh, look at these bugs. Oh my God, go away. It's hundreds and thousands of flies. So yeah, we're inside the shipwreck. Beautiful, clear scenery. Look at that. It'd be great to go dive down there.
Now, if I remember rightly up here at the very end, oh, look at this, look at that. Look, that is so cool. This is probably one of the, uh, the clearest uh, rides I've had over here, actually. Uh, when I did the video, it was a little uh, murkier than this. So it's absolutely beautiful right now. Now remember rightly, there's something at the end of here. So I think this is the stern, because the propeller's here. Be careful the propeller, the propeller sticks out somewhere. Okay, it's, it's up here, there's part of it, there's the prop shaft. Oh, you went right over it. You see it? <laughs> so that's your prop shaft. And uh, there's a propeller right there. It's still here, so it's very, very shallow. Should have a little marker on that, really, because uh, the water's a little low today. So there's your Shirkston shipwreck, and that's the uh, propeller. to Paul Coburn. It's nice to be here when it's actually sunny. Usually I get here, it's always cloudy or raining. I actually came here once and it was snowing. Right, this is the entrance way to the uh, Welland Canal from the Port Coburn side from Lake Erie. And of course, the Welland Canal goes all the way up to Lake Ontario. So the ship you see on the right, right here, uh, this particular ship is still in service, but yet the two ships we've seen as we come in, you'll just see in the video, those are there to be scrapped. I'll tell you a little bit more about those two ships very, very shortly as we make our way out of Port Coburn after about a little uh, break. So uh, yeah, I'll tell you a bit more about that very, very shortly. Um, in the meantime, well, look at this ship right here. Look at all the uh, scratch marks. This ship is actually painted blue originally, and with all its transitions in and out of the locks, it gets badly scuffed up like that. Anyway, time for a little walk around. So we're in Port Coburn. I'm going to moor up for a little bit, have a little walk around. Maybe grab a coffee. But it seems it's very pleasant. I'll be able to get Carl a birthday cake, because apparently it's Carl's birthday today. <laughs> hey! There you go. <laughs> All right, so we can find in Port Coburn, maybe grab a coffee, a pastry or something. I did see a cafe down there as I came in. Port Coburn's a nice place when it's sunny. Chance Discovery. Oh, it's close. Coffee house, bakery, catering. At least they're open. Lunch in Port Coburn didn't go down very well, as you can see, no ice cream, no snacks. Uh, the menu in this place, uh, Mark asked for a couple of things and it had nothing. Uh, it turns out they had just opened and uh, they were running very low on uh, goods. Uh, they even had no lids for our coffee, but we may do. For a more detailed look at Port Coburn, I'll put a link in the description below for Mark's video. He did put the drone up and did a few more things, so check that out. Being dwarfed by this huge, huge ship. Look at that. One of the great lake liners, travels the Great Lakes, Poi Farm, as far as up the uh, St. Lawrence, all the way to Duluth, uh, which is miles and miles away, Lake Superior. Backwards and forwards, delivering coal, iron ore, and things like that. Huge when you're out close to them. Over the last couple of uh, months, actually last six weeks, uh, two classic freight liners, uh, Great Lake liners, have come here to Port Coburn to be scrapped. Uh, this one, Ojibwe, and the new one next to it, the Manisty, I think it's called. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, where they scrap a lot of the ships here. There's three here currently being scrapped. Uh, this one, which one of them just got brought here like two weeks ago. I think it's this one. No, that's already missing its crane. Must be that one. Uh, Manisty, uh, that's the other one. So these are great ships that sailed the Great Lakes for 60 years, 70 years even. So uh, yeah, and this is where they come to die and be scrapped. And that's it, so end of, a, end of an era for these ships. All right, oh, look at the 
water on that. Okay, bye Port Coburn. Until next time. Temperature's starting to drop as you get back out on the water here. And it, it, the camera's, you, you haven't got to pick it up on camera, but we have a, a Fata Morgana right now, which is where the cold air uh, and the warm air are meeting and creating mirages in the front of you. So the horizon's like floating in the sky, which is really weird. Well, this is basically it for this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to play you out with some uh, bonus footage. Basically, it's footage which doesn't really have a story to it. Uh, just some extra footage as we went on down to uh, the Niagara River and uh, Crystal Beach and so on. Uh, so we didn't really film too much, so I'm just going to put some extra shots in here. And some of them are courtesy of Woody, so thanks very much, Woody, for the extra footage. Enjoy. Fucking more garbage. Yeah! I stole your thunder, man! Well, good job. Clean up the ocean. Clean up, clean up the seas.